Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. It's your girl, Ray P. Welcome back to another episode of the We Got Y'all podcast. As y'all know, I am not here by myself. I am joined by my amazing, astonishing, renowned, well-renowned, uh, everybody's favorite, your favorite alpha's favorite alpha, the coolest <laughs> kid on campus, on the yard, that's old. At your work, <laughs> at the cooler, uh -huh. <laughs> new city, new rich, <laughs> the one and only K Rich. What's going on, Kyron? <laughs> uh, first of all, I love you. I love Sincerely. you. Sincerely, you're watching on YouTube. Before she even got into the intro, I was cheesing from ear to ear because talking to Rachel in general is one of my favorite things to do. Ah. Talking to Rachel and we got y'all is, you know, that's just icing on the cake. Uh, I'm usually the one who gives the intros. Um, you know, I, I'll go on and on. I, I've had people say, you know, I need to hire you to go ahead and just take you on the road with me. But Rachel, you just outdid anything I've ever done. Come on, I appreciate man. that. I receive it. Uh, I don't even know how to follow that up, except for I am just blessed to be in the presence of the incredible Ray P, Rachel, whatever you want to call her. <laughs> Not whatever you want to call her, but y'all know what I'm saying. Yeah, be within clear. reason. Yeah, let's be quick. <laughs> within reason. Um, and we're here. We're here for another episode of We Got Y'all. Yeah. Uh, for those who are new, for those who are first time listeners, welcome. We appreciate you. This is a television podcast where Rachel and myself discuss different series. Uh, we'll throw in maybe some current events. Um, that's going to be further down the line. But if you look at our feed, you will see some series that we've covered. Um, I don't think we've done. I don't think we've done anything. Have we done anything from season one? No. Okay, then. so we're still waiting on that. There's there will be a day when we do a season one discussion <laughs> and kind of carry it throughout the whole entire series. Yeah. Um, but today we're discussing the shy. Yes. The shy is back. Um, we are gonna take these episodes weekly uh, and we're gonna release them and have discussions based off of it. Um, this is the second part of season six. Yes. So I want to be sure that everybody's aware we're not gonna spend a ton of time digging in the past. Uh, we're not going to do a recap episode of how we got here. It's a lot of television to watch, a lot of television to kind of discuss. So we're going to assume that you're already caught up. There will be spoiler alerts. There will be explicit content. Uh, but in the case of this wonderful program that we have, uh, Rachel, even though she did flower me with the compliments, um, I view her and I think everybody else does. Rachel is the star of this program. <laughs> we are here. We are here to get Rachel's takes on television. Um, and I, I chime in every now and then to help direct the conversation. So I am excited to talk to you about the shower. This is something we've never discussed. I yeah. think maybe passing very briefly, but we've never had any kind of in-depth conversation about the shy. So Crazy. this is all fresh for all of us. I know that is kind of wild. Um, but yeah, before we get into today's episode, we did release a Catching Up with Rachel episode. Yeah, um, It is on your podcast, wherever you get them, Apple, Spotify, Google on YouTube as well. A lot of great feedback from it. So we appreciate you as always. It was yes. good to sit down and just catch up with you uh, and start the feed. I bet people didn't know. I think we told them at the end, but I don't think they were expecting us to kind of spark it back up this soon. Yeah. But we'll get back to you. Two episodes in one week. Hey, we back. So we, we back. appreciate your patience. We told y'all once we get rolling, we'll be rolling. So Look for yeah. us back on a weekly and soon probably bi-weekly basis <laughs> with all the things we got coming in the pipeline. So your patience yeah. your waiting has not been in vain, okay? <laughs> it's not been in vain, at least for the next eight weeks, yeah. for sure. Yeah. You can check this feed weekly. We will be having reviews of The Shy. I'm sure that's going to overlap with um, House of Dragons. For sure. That starts in June. For sure. Hopefully... Amazon does us a solid and doesn't decide to drop Harlem somewhere in the mix of all that. Yeah, please. I still think that I, I still <laughs> think we're looking at a late summer, mm -hmm. fall type of situation. I haven't heard any announcements, um, but we have done two two shows at the same time. Yes, we so have. So it's nothing new. Um, so yeah, you can count on us to be here. Make sure you subscribe to those feeds. Follow the We Got Y'all page on Instagram. Comment, share, tell a friend to tell a friend if you like discussing television. I know we also have the Culture Garden podcast, but a lot of people found us when we got y'all. So, yeah. like I said, it's just one of those cool, this is one of those cool platforms that I just enjoy um, to talk about stuff with Rachel. And we won't hesitate. We'll get right into it. The Shy, season six, part two. 
episode nine, technically, even though this is the opener of the second part. I was just talking to Rachel in pre-production. This did not feel like a regular season opener. Mm -hmm. So the conversation is going to be more of a freestyle, like always. Uh, But here we are, episode nine, The Aftermath. Um, It was directed by Boma Iluma, written by Lena Wade, Justin Hillian, and Christiana Ray Cullen, or Cologne. As far as the synopsis, Victor and Emmett deal with the consequences of their decision to take on Duda. Keisha worries about her family's safety, while Jada and Darnell make moves to keep everyone safe. Alicia cashes in on a favor from Bianca. Rachel, we're here. We're here, Um, and we're back. So first and foremost, since we have never discussed the shy and we haven't discussed it with the audience, let's just get a quick rundown of your relationship with this show. Okay. Um, what you know, were you a day one watcher, season one watcher? Um, sure. what Absolutely. kept you here? And I've always said the makings of a great television show is that they know when to end. Mm. I want to know if you think that the shy should have already had his curtain call. Ooh, great question. Okay, let me start from the top. I am a day one, season one watcher of The Shy. I was in love with the series when it first came out. It was so well written. And we're while we're Midwest kids, we obviously are not from Chicago. But so from our outsider perspective, despite visiting family, I felt like it did a good job of depicting life, especially on the South side of Chicago. Mm -hmm. Um, Part two, I have never stopped watching The Shy, even when it was hard to watch. And I may or may not have said it last week on the checking in episode, but for the most part, even when shows fall off the rails, I will, especially a black show, I will continue to watch it because we need black shows and we need those ratings, you know, regardless. Um, I'll be vocal about my displeasure or uh, dissatisfaction, if that's the right word, with where the season has gone. Like, for instance, maybe it was season, this is season six, so maybe it was season four where Keisha had gotten kidnapped. Mm Mm-hmm. That whole shit was crazy and unnecessary. I understand maybe they were trying to bring awareness to black women and young girls being going missing and still being right there, you know, uh, within the same neighborhood, not too many steps from home, this and the third. But it was just really traumatic and it felt kind of unnecessary for what we had. Even her escape and how she was found and all of that felt forced. All of it. it. All of it. Howsoever, it's good to see her on the other side of that. <laughs> Facts. Um, Facts, always. I don't think that the shy should have ended already, okay. despite the changes in cast, because I I think a couple of things. I think everybody is stupid, but I like sort of the progression of the show. Um when Jason Mitchell blew his bag, uh, being a ridiculous ass nigga, I'll be honest, his story was my favorite storyline. I think a lot of people feel that way. Yeah. And I know that Emmett now has Smokies and he sort of took over that whole restaurant tour storyline of that. But he had the better story. And I, I'm interested to see what part two of season six looks like um, and and what that means for Smokies, what that means for Emmett's character. Um, I like the development. I hope that we get more of Rob um, and Tiff with their ridiculous asses. Um, Anything with Lynn Whitfield, I'm going to go up for. So I like her as his mother. I like seeing her. I love the addition of Jill Marie Jones. We got her in part one uh, as Bianca. Mm -hmm. 
I'm, I'm curious. So while the show has taken some interesting turns, and I'm on record calling Lena Waite the menace on many episodes. So yes. <laughs> as much as I say that, I do still ride. <laughs> and and I'm I'm on I'm on board for the shy. So I think they got renewed for season seven. So I'll be tuned in. Depending on how season six ends, we'll cover it. <laughs> I I okay. I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that. I'm glad yeah. you that I love that answer. Mm -hmm. I, I will say I'm surprised. Ooh. I think one of the few conversations that we did have about the shy was right in the middle when it was, as you mentioned, Jason Mitchell blew his bag. Mm -hmm. um, quote Kendrick had a weird case, got a weird case, got the weird shit going on in his life. Right. Um, and kind of changed the dynamic of the show. Yes. I want to credit Lena Waithe, mm -hmm. the cast production. Yes. It's very difficult to have a star, a lead of that nature in your show and the story that you're trying to tell. Mm -hmm. um, and then things happen to where they can't be a part of it anymore. Yeah. And to pivot and still be, not only be on the second part of season six, mm -hmm. this month earlier, it was announced that they will be back for season seven. Yeah. No word. There was no, you know, press release of would this be the final season? We don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so for all intents and purposes, they're going to keep rolling. But for them to kind of lose that character early on, I think after the second season, mm -hmm. and then just keep going. I think the fact that you still have some original cast that you saw grow. I think yeah. anytime you have a show where you have youth, you can see them grow on screen. Okay. It's one of my it favorite helps. Things. One of my favorite things as well. Even though they're not the most central characters, it's still they're still a very important part of the show. Sure. Um, it even felt a little bit different with Kevin missing. With Kevin missing, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean. And like I said, I say all that to go to your point of you sticking with it. I applaud you. I commend you. I just and I wish I had the sister's name. It was something I saw while I was scrolling, but she was just talking about black television and mm -hmm. just the space that black TV needs to be bad as well. Yeah. Um, there's always discussions in the community about, hey, we shouldn't, we should always make sure we go support, make sure we don't down or, or clown anything in public. We'll have those conversations behind closed doors. But also, more importantly, we shouldn't have to feel that, I don't know, uh, feel pigeonholed in that sense because sure. there's a ton of bad television out there. For sure. And if it's bad, it's just bad and you move on. And I'm not even saying the shot is bad because it's not. And there's, it's better than a lot of television. For sure. But my point when things change and when things look different, for them to keep pushing through and to take what they had and get us here, mm -hmm. I applaud them. Absolutely. You know, they, they found what worked. I don't I don't know if Emmett was I'm sure if you ask Lena Wade what her plans for Emmett were back in season one and two, mm -hmm. I don't think it would have looked like this, but for them to kind of make it and Jacob Lattimore in his own right has yeah. become a star. Um, partially because of the shy, and then it's incredible cast and the storyline, the writing, as you say. I'm here for it. I'm happy that we have this for sure. I'm curious to know how far it's gonna go. Um, same, same. One thing I'll say, and I, I'll be very curious to see. Uh, we saw in this episode mention of Kevin, we just mentioned him being gone. I like that they kept him, and I understand why for Maisha's scenario. I'm interested to see if season seven or even the finale of season six, we see Kev again. I have a strong feeling that he'll be back towards the end of this second part. Okay. I just, you don't, I haven't kept up with the actor's life. Yeah. Um, a lot of times when you see, or a lot of times, should I say, when you see someone leave a show like that, it's because they might've gotten a role on another show. Um, and, you know, scheduling conflicts the whole nine. I'm not sure if that happened. I don't think it did. So I think it's just more so a character type of development, or maybe he needed some personal time away from the show. I've seen that happen before. Mm -hmm. But like you said, I, I think they left the door open. Had they given us, take a deep breath, had they given us another season of Run the World, I think we would have seen another, uh, a similar situation mm -hmm. with the way they kept. Um, uh, why can't I think of her name right now? Um, 
was about to call her Emma, but that is not her name. I, I, I definitely was going to call her Emma as well. My apologies. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, I think they would they kept her around in text messages and things of that nature, and we would have seen the same. I think leaving the door open is always a smart play because you can always write around it, even if it doesn't go as planned. Ella is her name, Ella. not Emma. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as much as we love that show, trust me, I don't know how we missed that. But yeah, I think he's come back to the end of the season. Season seven for sure. For sure. I think he introduced him back towards the end for some reason. Something didn't happen right in Chicago or California. Maybe somebody goes out to California to see him. Mm -hmm. um, I think we'll get an answer sooner rather than later because Maisha just can't be texting all day. This boyfriend that's never popped coming up on screen. They're going to have to give her something to do other than being this whole rapper music thing. For sure. Well, well let's start with Maisha since we're here. <laughs> yeah. Unless her, oh, well, I guess technically, yeah, you're right. I think I know where you're headed with this. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, let's take into context. We we talked about the children growing up. Maisha, Kev, Papa, and Jake, and Gemma, and I guess now Brittany mm -hmm. and Bakari. <laughs> <laughs> they are 17, between 17 and 19. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They mm -hmm. are still very much young. So while Kev has graduated, and they all have graduated except for Bakari, um, yep. while they're out of high school, they are still very much kids, for real, for real. Very much. And so Maisha, we don't know that she works. She How she's funding her fledgling rap career, we have no idea other than Gemma making things happen with Britney's money, maybe. Uh mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You can't go out to California to see Kev unless Kev sends for her. Thanks. We saw in this episode that she and Papa are still very much friends. Now, if you friends wink. I was just about to say, that's you put that very kindly, Rachel. You put that very kindly. If you're not truly caught up um, on the shy or have not watched all six seasons leading up to episode nine, of part six, Maisha and Kev had a flirtation. It didn't go anywhere. Kev kind of played in her face because she was a bigger girl. You know, kids. Everybody cannot be with a big body bend, especially when you're immature. Um, but grown man, Maisha, that's a grown man vehicle. Hey, hello. Grown man. Uh, <laughs> feel me. You feel me? Um Maisha and Papa ended up dating and were in love. They broke up their kids, puppy love. However, Maisha and Kev still had that. And they wanted that old thing back. And so at the end or somewhere in season six of the first part of the season, we see them get back together. And then now, after two, two and a half, three seasons away from each other, now they're back and now they have the challenge of being kids in a long distance relationship at 37 who deals <laughs> not so locally <laughs> who has the means to move about it's tricky so i can't imagine being 19 and really expecting that to actually work but whatever uh <laughs> Fast forwarding us back to the place where we are today. Uh, we see Maisha and Papa having a discussion and she is confiding in him because they remained friends and Papa played cool while she got back with Kev, despite anybody with sense knowing that he would still be bothered by that. Mm -hmm. Maisha broke up with him. He didn't break up with her. I, I feel you on that. I, I'm mm -hmm. with you 100%. I was going to try to shoot on some bail, but the show hasn't really done. I don't know. I think he should still be a little. Papa should be, I think, reeling a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Everything that happened with his dad. Yeah. Um, I don't know. He seemed. I don't know if you are. Right, here's the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. If you aren't familiar with the shot, like Rachel just said, and I'm glad you mentioned that because I will in the episode description, if you are somebody who, you know, fell off in season three, four, haven't really caught up. Mm -hmm. They Showtime did a great or Paramount Plus, whoever. Yeah. Um, they did a great job of putting like this 15 minute video together. Yes. Uh, just catching up. It's just a recap. If you haven't, it's one through six, everything you kind of need to know. 
Yeah. It's not all the details, but it was at least get you in the conversation. Mm -hmm. I'll put that in the episode description. But where he is and what that death did, um, I just feel like he should be in a different headspace. I don't know. See, on Christ a solid rock, Papa is standing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's, yeah. I think, I don't want to say it, and I think we'll see. I don't want to call it full confidence or mm-hmm. false um, relief, but I think that there is a part of Papa that is just trying to be strong and is yeah. just trying to make it and show up for everybody in his life because he feels like that is his duty. You know, he says yeah. in the episode, you know, I want my own church. So before Papa didn't want to be a preacher. I mean, he, exactly. kind of, you know what I'm saying? But it yeah. that was something that he was resolute in. So now I think that we'll see at least for the first few episodes, we'll see Papa trying to take over that man of the house. Uh, I'm the only person that's solid a- around me, that foundational structural character and you know what i'm i'm glad see that's why you're the star of the show rachel because that is great that's a great point Mm -hmm. looking back historically papa has always been the more mature one yes and kind of the one that leaned more towards the adult experiences yes whether he knew it or not there's a lot of naivety that came with it Mm -hmm. um but even you know his dad had a great line when he said, you know, you're not, you're in no position to be raising a child when I'm still raising you. Yeah. Um, back when, um, back when Kevin and Jake had their beef, like Papa was the one kind of letting them know, like, yo, we boys. For sure. Um, so, I, so it makes sense. And the fact that you just said that reminded me of it. It makes, it's on brand for his character. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just a huge thing. But something else you said that I think is a big factor in this, these, they are kids. Yeah. Um, respectfully. Yeah. Um, cause I don't like, I don't like calling these 18, 19 year olds kids, but they are kids. And you yeah. don't know that until you reach a certain age. For sure. Trust me. You're talking to two I people know. right now. Yeah. You're listening to two people right now. You can't tell us nothing at, at a younger age to 17. For I sure. really thought we were grown, knew everything. Sure. And now I look back at the 17 year old version of myself and I'm like, man, he was dumb as shit. Yeah. What a mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you don't know what you don't know, and you're still learning. You're still learning your own emotions and how to deal with certain things. For sure. Um, and there's that, you know, I guess enjoy it because there's a there was there there comes a point in life where you just stop reaching all your first. Mm-hmm. You know, all your you know all these emotions are kind of repeated. They're not, there's yeah. nothing new. Yeah. Um, and that can be a tricky time. That can be a mm-hmm. real tricky time. So yeah, to watch them go through that and really still think that. They know what's going on. It, 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 it's something that I do enjoy about the show a lot. Um, yeah, I, I'm curious to know what they do with Maisha's character and how this is going to roll forward. Obviously, she's in the booth, and there's a because even with that, even mm-hmm. with her recording, there's a whole other storyline with Gemma. Um, that's a little bit more, I guess, intriguing to what we have going on as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Gemma doesn't even know it yet. All time, it's just a lot going on. It, it so is. I don't a, know where Maisha fits in it. Let Let's stick with the kids, I guess, to to yeah. break this into the episode. Um, to your point, when we met Maisha, she was helping. She was missing school to take care of her younger siblings while her mother was working. Mm-hmm. And throughout the course of the series, she's made mention of wanting to take care of her family, wanting to take care of her family. Howsoever, other than this music and that bit of background information, we don't know anything else about Maisha other than she dated Papa and is now dating Kev. You know what I'm saying? So I would like the writers, and I hope that's something that we see, is for them to delve into Maisha a bit more. I want them to give us more of her story not just more screen time but more of her story to make her a bit more of a well-rounded character um it is very interesting and i think she's totally justified in being frustrated 
with Gemma and then now the Britney. Mm -hmm. The integration of Britney into their lives. You know, when we met her in part one, we know that she is Bakari's sister. They were separated as two children of the system. She's back. And she's a rapper. That's dope. Gemma is immediately intrigued by her. Um, there is a chemistry that, let me just pause. I love a good mouthpiece. Period. Listen, and Brittany got listen. a mouthpiece. Gemma doesn't yeah. stand a chance. <laughs> That's real. Gift of gab is a real thing. The gift of gab is a real thing. And as, some, as a private school girl who primarily found myself on the other side of the tracks. A motherfucker with a mouthpiece <laughs> is dangerous. <laughs> it will be the ride of your life. But if you're not well equipped, you will lose your damn mind. And I think that that, unfortunately, is going to be the plight of Gemma. Mm, yeah, I can see that. I can 100% see that because she's she's smitten. She's smitten. Not in, not necessarily because, all right, let's take what you just said. Yeah. Someone who may or may not, I can't confirm or deny, have a little <laughs> bit of, a little bit of something to say. I'm just going to put it like that. I might have a, I might have something to say. <laughs> I might have something to say every now and then. People automatically assume that has to do with, um, getting with you what you want in a romantic mm -hmm. way or whatever the case is sometimes it's just about getting shit done period and that yeah. i found in my life is more the attraction yes sometimes i know how to move in this room mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of course we can't go without quote hope show you how to move in a room full of vultures period like, i know what to do how to operate mm -hmm. i know how to get things done i think mix the mouthpiece mixed with that because you can't have mouthpiece and not do what you say you're gonna do exactly and it's just bullshit exactly. Consider right. the personality higher. <laughs> exactly. Go exactly. Ahead. Exactly. So when she's sitting down and she's talking about or realizing that she's exploring, you mm -hmm. know, I kissed a girl and I liked it. That's the one thing I will say about the show. There are some lines that make you just roll your eyes. Mm -hmm. um, there was a New Jack City line in this reference, like sit your five dollar ass down when he was when a dude was talking to Bakari, and it's just kind of like okay, like. I know you guys can come up with something better. Just a throwaway line. It don't got to be nothing deep. For like, sure. Just prove your point. But For my sure. whole thing is she is trying to figure out what this means and where it stands. Mm -hmm. And all that scene did was show me that uh, Brittany's a problem for her. Oh, for sure. She's a problem for her. For and sure. she's a problem that Gemma didn't see coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she wants to know. And that's how it is sometimes when you're going through these new experiences. Like I said. Yeah. I just want you to tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What should I be doing? Um, and Brittany's got so much other stuff, so much other baggage. Her yeah. true intentions aren't really fully known to mm -hmm. everyone yet. Uh, what she's really there for, why she has money to begin with, all of that. So obviously it's funny business. When you ask two people, yeah, you want to go eat? Nah, we cool. Get an early night. Social media always does it. Always. It always does it. You know what I mean? Always way <laughs> always does it you see everybody's done been on that phone and seeing some funny little funny little thing that you weren't expecting to see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh okay that's how you're moving okay okay oh, i'll see you bet yeah. got it yeah. Pete. <laughs> Pete. Bet. i felt like bad for Maisha in that because i did I, feel bad for Maisha. while jake maybe a little curious about what's going on between um Brittany and Maisha because Jake too is from the other he's from the streets quote unquote you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. he knows that and he knows what's up uh, Jake saw Brittany coming a mile away despite not knowing her initial true intentions or where she came from but he peaked game because Jake too has a mouthpiece again if you're not a season one through six watcher of the shy Jake Loki game Gemma from Kev. So he knows a bit about being Mr. Steal Your Girl. So here mm -hmm. we <laughs> so I, I would be very, very, very curious as to as to what that looks like. Um from his perspective. Let's, 
Go ahead. You mentioned Jake, and I want to talk about Jake. Yeah. I'm, I'm all right. So this is where it gets tricky because, like I said, this is not. They did a really good job of making sure this was the second part of season six, mm-hmm. not the beginning of season seven. Yeah. Right. So it, there was no mistake. They picked up right where they left off. Quote, as you see the title, the aftermath, Matthew, right in the aftermath of everything. So I don't know exactly what's going on with Jake. But we know Jake is smart enough to know what that money meant. Right. I was disappointed. And then, you know what? I was I, surprised. I was very surprised. But then I wrote down. He is still a dumbass kid. He is, but you're right. You're 100 percent right. And that's yeah. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, no matter what I say out of my mouth next, mm-hmm. what Rachel said is the answer. He is a dumbass kid. That's it. But, and despite, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna step on it, but this go ahead, go ahead. living with Reg, the other brother who's now whose cause of death is Duda. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. Um, and so living with Trig, even though he knows, he knows about selling a little something. He knows, but remember when Reg was really kind of running things, Jake and them was like 13, not yeah, even was youngest. They were still significantly younger. So yeah. I can still little bro you. The only I'm less, dare I say disappointed in Jake for doing it but with this is the story that we have because I'm more irritated quote unquote if I'm not even really irritated but it's like damn get it together I'm more frustrated by the fact that everybody is repeating the same mistakes it's stupid to me and candidly I speak of being semi of privilege. We ain't, I ain't no Gemma, you know, and her daddy, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, no, most of us aren't. I wasn't worried about where my next meal was coming from. You know, I always knew my parents, both of them were coming home at night. Thank you, Lord. Um, but that desire for money and y'all know I'm churchy. If y'all been following us, like the love of money is truly the root of all evil. Because that desire has everybody making such ridiculous, foolish ass decisions. I understand that Jake is 19 and he has this, I said fledgling earlier, but he has this little, this startup business that he's he's getting off the ground. We appreciate an entrepreneur. Howsoever, we learned in season one or two who Mr. Perry, aka Duda was. We knew that. Mm-hmm. So for Brandon, aka Jason Mitchell, to go into business with him, which is how we learned of Duda and all his uh, devilment. <laughs> That's one thing. But then for Emmett, Trick, despite them having history, aka Victor, uh, mm-hmm. Jake's other brother, who he lives with, mm-hmm. and now Jake getting caught up in his shit. I don't understand because you're privy to the conversations of Emmett, of Trig, of the other men of Darnell, men in the community who know that dude ain't shit. You know what this is gonna come from the weight that this free money, nothing in the world is free, baby. So, and that's I don't understand. And so I was disappointed even with Emmett. But I again, everybody want to make a name for themselves. Everybody wants to be successful. It's caught the grind for a reason. Shit is hard. Yeah. And like I said, everything that everything that I say is gonna go back to what you said, dumbass kid. Yeah. However, I think the thing that disappointed me the most was there was no he asked, what's this for? I get that. Mm-hmm. But you could tell by his lack of follow-up that he didn't really care. He was just going to take that money. Um, when I he get, you know, that kind of money. Exactly. And just hand it to you in cash mm-hmm. with nothing. Um, that's why people get fucked up with credit. Because sure. like you don't, nobody sure. needs anything right now. Like sure. here, here, you you have this to use. 
-hmm. Trust me, we gonna spin the block. We coming back for this. Yeah. But what you do with it in the meantime is whatever. Just mm -hmm. just have something for us when we call. Mm -hmm. I get that. That's it. And I I get that you know. One of our favorite, when I say R, I mean Rachel and myself, one of our favorite movies, Inside Man, mm -hmm. reference a quote that I use all the time, behind every great fortune is a great crime. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't want to sit here and act like what Jake is doing is not normal. Like there's a ton yeah. of businesses that have started by, you know, the dope boys of the hood. For sure. Street dudes, all of that. A little investment here and there. I get it. But to not know the terms of said investments is going to be something that bites you in the ass, especially at 19 years old. And that's how you get caught up and kind of lose hope of all your dreams because you're going to fight for survival at that point. For sure. Because you end up your head. For sure. But here's the thing. Despite Jake's brothers being who they are, I can take that from him. More so. I have more grace for Jake than I have for Emmett, who we saw in season, five, in season six, part one, turn around and do the same thing. And Especially after understanding who he was because he was in business with Brandon in the first two seasons. So yep. you know who this nigga is. You know what he stands for, what he's about. So I, I don't get it. And candidly, despite Emmett's how he grew up, you're not a street kid. So there, is a, level, there is a level of naivete Howsoever, you're old enough to know better. I'm sorry. There's, I don't know if anybody out there knows what I'm talking about when I say this. Rachel, I don't even know if you know it. I'll send it to you if you don't. There's a video on Twitter that floated around. It's like this little ass kid uh -huh. driving. He's driving. He's in the passenger seat. And I don't know if this is like his older cousin, his brother. But the little kid is just going in on this dude. Like, you're not a street dude. You're not tough. <laughs> you're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. No. Have you ever seen this, Rachel? Uh -uh. It's one of my favorite videos. Oh, there's a moment. Uh, there's a like he, the, the kids is going in. Like you got all them guns, you ain't gonna shoot nothing. All them guns, and the dude looking at him like, "What makes you say that? Like, what makes you? Who told you that your mama?" And then the little kid at one point says, "You a sweet nigga. You a ladies man." <laughs> and every time I think of Emmett, I think of that line. Like, nigga, yes. you a ladies man. Like, nigga, yes. you are not about this life. That's it. That's I gotta it. post that. I'll definitely send it to you. But that's one of my favorite videos to watch because as soon as he in the video that I'm talking about, as soon as the kids said you a ladies man, the dude driving bust out laughing mm -hmm. the same way I did. Yeah, and that's just hilarious. Like just mm -hmm. reading your whole life, like nigga, you ain't even about that, bro. Stop it. Like, For you sure. a ladies man, you a sweet nigga, all of that. I do appreciate the show, even though you know people operate outside of their normal operations. Um they did a job of showing that he's not that guy. He's not a shooter. He's Good. not. Somebody. He's he's smart. Mm -hmm. He's got to use that to his advantage to get out of this situation. Yeah. Um. I don't want to step on the every episode. Gap. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. You know, he he he's associated. You know, for he's sure. initiated. He's initiated <laughs> in the club, for sure. For sure. Um. But yeah, like I, I just I, that's something I specifically wanted to mention with Jake. I just. He knows better, mm -hmm. and his lack of not asking questions makes me believe that there's something else going on with that. Because he mm -hmm. even had the conversation with Trig. You know, he knows what that money is, but oh well, I'm by, I'm out here trying to get it. We're in the south side. We're in the south side, baby. We're we on the south it. side, and we're trying to get it. And I know that Brittany gave my bitch ten racks. Mm hmm. And I have nothing but a t-shirt. That's real. That's pressure. My girl who endured, who lost our child due to violence, due to mm -hmm. silly shit. I have nothing to give this girl. Who I guess he loves, you know, 19. I guess you love her. Yeah, as, as much as you can love in 19. <laughs> as much as you can love in 19. So I think some of that, uh, we'll see. I think some of that was, let me get Gemma together. Let me show some display of affection. Damn. To her. Like, You're right. I compete. You're right. You're right. That's exactly what that is. Mm -hmm. You got to step up. Because ain't nothing. When you're in that position where you can't say anything because you ain't doing anything. That part. That's rough. You that At part. that point, you got to do it however you get it. It's just... 
maybe I'm just so far removed. Let me not say so far removed, but my mindset is so removed from being 19 mm -hmm. that it's hard for me to think about it in that sense. But you're absolutely right. Um, the thing Picard, is, just know these like, young and old. I know them. You do. You do. <laughs> you do. You've done. You've done your work. You've done your homework. I've done life my is homework. The, life is the best teacher. That's life it. is the best teacher. That's it. Um, Bakari. Bakari. I feel bad yeah. for Bakari. Okay, let's get into it. I, if y'all, I'll be talking tough, but I really am a bleeding heart, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel bad for Bakari because he really is caught between a rock and a hard place. Um, it's not easy to get out of the game. He, again, if you've not, if you're not truly caught up, um, Bakari street kid, um, got a couple bodies on him, killed some integral parts to the story. You can go back and rewatch. However, um, in an effort of brotherhood and trying to clean his life up, he moves in Papa and his family take him in. However, pretty much almost simultaneously, he ends up as one of Duda's henchmen because they know he's a young wild boy who ain't scared to shoot. So he becomes that. And now you go from robbing, stealing, begging for food, no place to lay your head, no money, to a place to lay your head, a home, and now money. Dirty money, mm -hmm. but money nonetheless. Something that you've never had. So... Mm -hmm. It's hard to break away from despite everything that's happened and having the realization or understanding that if I leave, I'm not just walking away. Do at this point, am I jumped out? Is it blood in, blood out? Is death the only way out of this association? I mean, I guess Trig did it, but he went to jail <laughs> to get away. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So Bakari again, and I think he's even younger than them, than uh Jake and the crew. I think he's a year or so younger than them. Is he? I think. I either like either way, yeah, he's he's right around. Here's one thing for sure: he's not older. You know that exactly. Sure. exactly, exactly. So here he is. He just does not have really anywhere to turn. And you see, kind of Papa being like, bruh. I could have died, but again, at 17, 18, 19, you don't necessarily have the wherewithal or really the freedom to walk away like that and not be in fear for your life. Especially, because, go ahead. I was going to say, especially with a nigga like Duda. Especially with a nigga like Duda, because regardless, even though being a drug kingpin murdering slash, slash mayor <laughs> slash mayor being his henchman <laughs> despite the danger that comes with being a higher body or whatever for him there is still a level of protection and regardless Duda said to him we're your family now there is a level of obligation that all of that nook nook the other nigga, Duda, all of them a responsibility that they have to Bakari because he's affiliated. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, ain't nothing. They clearly ain't shooters. They ain't street niggas. It's nothing y'all could do other than pray for me and give me somewhere to lay my head. <laughs> That's yeah. it. So at 17, 18, 19, it's a tough choice to make. It's hard. It's not easy, especially when the alternative is them killing me. Yeah, you don't... That's one of those things when you get into it, you never ask, how do I get out of this? For sure. Um, we, ain't no blood in, blood out. Yeah, on our on our other podcast, The Culture Garden, we, we reviewed Ray a mm -hmm. few weeks ago, and Ray Charles in real life had a quote where he just said, hey, if I knew that I was going to live into my 70s, I would have taken better care of myself. For sure. Like, I think about that in a sense with Bakari. Like, if I knew that I was going to have this moment of my life where I wanted more, mm -hmm. or to switch it up or to pivot, maybe I wouldn't have even got into it to begin with. Yeah, um, but how could also he? Re 
Yeah, that, and that's the thing. That he's a child. You don't know that, and that's what we've been discussing. You can't you can't escape that part. Um, and then also, I think of Big Boy's character in ATL. ATL, okay. What I tell you, what I tell you when we started this, this grown man business. Mm -hmm. This is grown man business, and I think sure. Bakari's realizing that. And we don't. I don't think we take enough time to think about the adult ass decisions that these children are making. Absolutely. It's a video game to them. Absolutely. Um, and it's a rush. And you feel, I think you made a mention of it, of being with Duda and being in a crew. The one, the one beneficial, one of the beneficial parts of it is that you get to move around. Mm -hmm. I won't say freely, because I, you're never really moving around freely in that life, but people at least have to think twice For sure. before causing harm or starting any kind of ruckus. Because mm -hmm. if I do that with him, I know who he's connected with. Yep. Do I want to bring that fight to my door? Exactly. Chances are no. So I'm going to let him live. I'm going to let him be. You get a few more passes than the average person would because yeah. he's connected. Um, but it does. I love the parallel of what we're seeing. He's He's on both sides of things. That's it. And there's talks and he's trying to figure out where he fits in all of this because, yeah, I work for you, but I don't necessarily want to just I got other people I care about, too. That part. And they're in the crosshairs of all of this. And to and, see where this ends up is, is interesting. Yeah. And it, it is. In, we should say interesting, but it's interesting because if Duda had have gotten to Bakari just a little earlier. There is no relationship with him, Kev, him, Papa, Kev, Jake. Th there's none of that. And he just has a young wild street dude mm -hmm. who basically got a lick because he needed that. You know what I'm saying? He would have yeah. had the soldier, quote unquote, that he's looking for had they not intervened. And that's how the listen, all you need is somebody to care about you. <laughs> Facts. Facts. Your life. They do the best they can. That's a fact, man. I, I mean, think. Go ahead. I was gonna say I think Bakari's where we see him go. It was summed up perfectly in that scene with Papa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when Papa asked him, like, "Don't you think it's time for you to stop running the streets?" And he mm -hmm. said, "Listen, like, I know it sounds fucked up, but it ain't that easy." It's and that kind of reiterates everything we've just been saying. It's not that easy. Like, it mm -hmm. sounds like that, but you know, these are powerful people. He doesn't even existence. have the freedom to come check on you. Yeah. yeah. You're not my family for real. It's very interesting. And I'm glad that we understand because not understand. But I'm glad it was revealed where Brittany came from because she mm -hmm. just shows up last season. And so now knowing Duda is a very powerful person. I mean, he's the mayor still, yeah. maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm imagining so. I haven't heard anything different, so I would imagine that he is still the mayor. Yeah, I don't think anybody's really truly replaced him because Trig is just like a councilman or something. Right. Um, yeah, county. Yeah, he ran for city council. It is interesting that he to to learn that he is behind Britney's return to Chicago, um, into their lives, and so in the recap, it says it reminds us that. She just showed up on his doorstep and said, somebody, I asked around, and somebody told me this is where you were. Learning that that is now Duda is yeah. very interesting to me. And we know we saw him kill Papa's father last season or have him killed. But knowing even then that you were losing your footing, your hold on Bakari so much so that you had to bring in his family to spy and pay her a significant amount of money is crazy to me. So here's my here. I guess here's the hiccup with it. Okay. And this this gets into the confusing aspects mm -hmm. of the storylines. And I'm, it hasn't been revealed. I'm sure we'll find this out. I don't understand why Duda finds it so necessary to take that kind of step to keep an eye on Bakari. It's not like Bakari is his number two or his right hand. Because he's young enough to be molded, he's already a killer. Despite the influence of Papa in his family, a year and a half does not erase 
15, 16 years of struggle. You've been killing. You've been not having a conscience. I can work with that. If I want somebody on the under world, as far as we know, as far as I'm concerned, he wants Bakari to become the next nook or truly the next second in command because dude who's vying for it, it ain't going to be him despite what he thinks it is. Right. Right. So That's a I'm great point. Having somebody that you really can mold. And we saw Otis Perry, a.k.a. Duda, is a ruthless ass nigga. Mm -hmm. That, if we remember, that is specifically what he was looking for and what he found in Bakari. I don't know how I missed. Uh, that's a great point. I don't know how I missed that. As much as I love the wire, that's a clear. That's a clear. Marlo Stanfield, Michael Lee type mm -hmm. of scenario. Big Paul's on the puppy. Yep. I see this kid. I want to keep him around just because yep. I see some things in him mm -hmm. where he can be useful down the line. And yep. just like anything else in American culture, um, we are fascinated with youth who are talented. Yep. If you are yep. young and talented. There are a lot of things and a lot of doors that can be opened up for you. For sure. And that's for no, sure. it's no different because it's the street life. For sure. And here, here's here's this. I also think that Otis really does want to be a father. Duda might not, but yeah. Otis does. Consider him taking Jake in in season two, three. Mm -hmm. He really was trying to play that role. Even though, yeah, I want you to be doing some silly shit too, but I want to be the elder statesman of this shit. Because remember, um, the nigga that he killed, Tracy's who he reported to. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he he wants that, and he looked at that man as a father, despite, I mean, sometimes niggas got to go. But... I think that he wants to continue that. So there's a part of it. And like you said, big hands on small paws. Is that what it was? Yeah, but, uh, big big paws on a puppy. Yeah, big paws on a puppy. So it's it's very interesting because them niggas ain't, he don't fuck with them like they think so. Like they think right. so. Facts. Facts. If there is somebody that I can truly train and truly make. Uh, I don't want to say make allegiance, but be allegiant. No, whatever. Have allegiance. Have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying. Um, this is this is what I do. So I'm gonna keep you around. I'm gonna do what I have to do to make sure that you are always within my reach, always within my grasp. Unfortunately, I gotta hurt you, but it's just hurting me more than it's hurting you by killing the only father figure you've ever had. Surprise, nigga. It's just me. <laughs> <laughs> and that was some of the most gangster shit ever when he admitted that. Yeah. Like kind of just not only just I don't know how to really word this. I don't want to say admirable. Mm -hmm. There's some kind of respect that's factor into owning that you do terrible things. Yes. And even if I think you're crazy. Mm -hmm. If I can see you rationalize your decisions, mm -hmm. I kind of at least know how you operate and, yeah. how to, how to op and I know how to operate around you. For sure. And I know how your brain works. For sure. That might sound nutty to the average person, but to him, that's just another line of work. And this whole world is, you know, we look at it as a criminal world and underworld, you know, 60, 63rd Street mob, all that kind of stuff. But it's really just about we're running a business. That's it. Most of the shit we do is illegal. That's but it. This is still, I mean, they 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 have these men in suits. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like this is a business. We're gonna treat it as such. So, yeah. Do the trip, man. He's crazy. I love him. He he wild. He wild. Like you need a sh you you can't. We talked about earlier if the show should. You can't have a show like this without Duda. For sure. You need For him. sure. You need For him. Sure. Like you need the bad guy. I love it. I love a bad guy. Um. And an evil genius. And, and Duda really is that. He he yeah. really, really is an evil genius. Um, I you have guess to be in that world. You have to be. That part. That part. I we guess. see what happens to the Ned Starks of the world. The Ned Starks of the world get their heads chopped off. Yeah. 
That's just it. It is what it is. Like you can't be that. You got to be the evil genius. You cannot. You cannot. What did you think of he and Emmett's conversation? At the end? At the end, yeah. Uh, So, of course, that's the setup. Mm -hmm. Because I keep referencing this. I I looked at this from the mind frame of where is this going? Mm -hmm. We're picking up where we left off. Where is this going? At some point, because of how the first part ended, Mm -hmm. that's going to have to come to a head at some point. Mm-hmm. Is this going to be at the end of the season? Is this going to be in this episode? It's going to be a couple episodes down the line. And we find out right away that now, because I believe Duda said this before, um, I like favors. Period. Mm-hmm. Anytime a nigga say that, stay away. Please. Stay far away <laughs> from that nigga. Uh, if nigga who said, I'd rather, if you are yeah. from cash, whatever, gifts, no, mm-hmm. I'd rather have a favor. I'm going to keep a favor in the back pocket. Mm. Yeah, negative. It, yeah. Uh, so it's green. He didn't know. He didn't know. He should have known. Yeah. But he ain't. All right. Know. So let's talk. <laughs> let's just let's just break this down. Okay. Yeah. Um. Warning shots go out. Mm-hmm. And they were exactly that. I don't think anybody had the intent. We know as viewers, there was no intent to harm anyone in there. But to let you know, we know what time it is. We know who shot at us. Yeah, like, we we here, we coming. Emmett um, is so stupid. Emmett is dumb, and I'm glad it was referenced to. I'm glad that um um I'm glad his pops. Yeah, I'm glad Darnell told him that. Um, every time I see Darnell, I think of trapped in the closet. But <laughs> um, I'm glad he told him that. I'm glad everybody else did. Talk about being in over your head. Yeah, and. The boldness, the balls, the stupidity mm-hmm. that it takes to really like put your neck out there and look for Duda. Mm-hmm. Nine and times out of ten, that essentially. Yeah, like that's you. You're not built for that. Not at all. You're not, not built for that. All. Normally, in the real world, Emmett would go to somebody else connected. Mm-hmm. Um, he would go to uh, he would go to Alicia. Okay, in real life, he would go to Alicia. Yeah. This is a situation. I need a rabbi. Mm-hmm. I need somebody that's going to have my back because I'm going up against the enemy of my enemy is a friend. Yeah. Right? He doesn't know any better. He also, he, I, I can respect, all I know is that I'm tired of running. Mm-hmm. I get it. I get that. I get that. At some point, you just got to look at whatever it is in the face and just say, you know what, I'm here to, I'm here to uh, fight this battle. And you wouldn't even have to be running if you did not get your grown ass into this silly situation. I'm that was that that's I'm sorry, Rachel. Go ahead. But that's the that's the real that's the real that's this mess. Up right here. Yeah, yes. that's what's blowing me the most. And I felt some kind of way. We don't do things that bother me, but a thing that bothered me was this and even Keisha's response. Towards the mm-hmm. end of part one, and then even here in the only, well, the first scene that we see her in, you know, Keisha was on board for all of Duda's help. And again, while she's older than Jake and them, she's still young too. You're like 20, yeah. 21 at most, but you used to deal with Nuck. So you really already knew. But again, everybody wants a house. Everybody wants something else and nothing is free. So I'm actually more surprised at how, and I guess maybe this is just an age thing. I'm surprised at her reaction. You don't want to be in danger. Of course, nobody does. But you don't want to owe this nigga shit what you take from a nigga who likes favors. Once again, another wire quote, Rachel. You want it to be (laughs) one way. But it's the other way. It's the other way. Like, I I didn't understand. That was so frustrating to me because she really was wanting it both ways. You know what I'm saying? You want this nice ass house on the north side. You want all of this other shit. But you know your man does not have it. This nigga has three, four kids. And is help raising yours. 
did immigrate immig graduate high school? We don't know, but he's lucked into now owning Smokies with the help of this drug lord, mayor, business assassin. If I'm not mistaken, Keisha even made a reference to saying why, I, I'm paraphrasing, but why do you act like we can only have this because of duty? It does not make sense. It makes zero sense whatsoever. The naivete, dare I say, you just, y'all don't know how much shit really, really costs, but you know what you want. Oh, bless the youth. Go ahead. I'm sorry. That was no, you you good because it's like that's the that's the one part that that's exactly why I said you want it to be one way, but it's the other way. Because yeah. on one hand, you are saying this is what you want, mm -hmm. but now that you see of how it's coming in and who I'm getting it from and all this stuff that comes with it, now you don't. And you're kind of undermining me by saying you, you're acting like if this is such an easy thing to kind of just stop. Right. We already because in it. I did this to you. Exactly. We owe the money. We owe the house because I believe that shit is in Duda's name. Like yes. nothing that you have is off of your own merit and skill. You're a young mother in college, <laughs> you know, trying to figure it out. You can't mm -hmm. do this. And, and what he was able to provide was not enough. You need more space. You need this. And they're not understand that. Howsoever, baby. It's some strings that come. And so once them favors get to calling in, you cannot be scared. Even if it's scary, you can't be mad that it's guns in the house. I got to protect us because we involved. And even though she knew at one point that Emmett was essentially in debt with this nigga, you kept asking for more. You was mm -hmm. grateful. You were benevolent. You wanted it. She ain't got to get dirty. Until. I'm saying. You can't have it both ways. <laughs> you cannot have it both ways. Play in the dirt, you get dirty. That's what comes it, with it. That's these it. Rolls of money, these rolls of 20s and all that in this bag. Come on. It comes with a price. It's an int it's interest tacked onto this shit. Yeah. And a lot of people can't pay it. For sure. So that's just kind of where we are. Um, mm -hmm. But let's get back to the ending. So let's yeah. get back to the final scene between very bold, very dumb, however you want to look at that, him showing up. Mm -hmm. uh, because Duda, very much, it would have been very in line for his character mm -hmm. to blow him his head off. For sure. Um, because you ain't just about to walk in like everything's sweet. Like you that just part. ain't take no shot. That part. Now, Emmett really overplayed, and this is a, I don't know if this is a writing thing. I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and nitpick about it too much. I just think Emmett overplayed his hand as mm -hmm. far as like Duda needs me. Yeah. Like, bro, you can be replaced. That part. Duda that even part. said it in that final scene. Like, what, what you gonna do without me? The same thing I've been doing, nigga. That part. Like, I, 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 for that to be his only card, for that to be his big joker, I was like, all right, man, you gotta think of a better plan before you go face to face with this man. Because everybody part. told you, bro, are you asking for death? Yeah. Because he gonna, he gonna shoot you where you stand. So he was able I to get in there. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was like, I could get somebody else to run Smokies. Are you crazy? That, that's what blows me, Rachel. He <laughs> acts like he, his position is so uh, prestigious. Yeah. And so one of one that Duda couldn't just find another face, another clean face for this business. That's it. Uh, it's, it's we in Chicago, my nigga. There's a million. Don't forget, you're the clean face that was once branded. Exactly. Easily exactly. replaceable. Okay, I can find another clear face. I can find another clear face for him. So for him to walk in there with that being the only thing on his, you know, in his back pocket, mm -hmm. that was very dumb. For him to kind of parlay that into saving his life. Yeah. Once again, Duda loves a favor. That's it. That's it. And now he's getting into a spot where he can't get himself out of that. Now the favor is I need you to get Alicia up out here. Who we just met. Uh, who he just met. And learns yeah. that it's Rob's mom slash mm -hmm. the uh, the sister of the kingpin. I don't have his name handy. Uh, who do the killed? Who was like a father figure to him? Uh, yeah, I, I don't have his name either. I know exactly what you're talking about, obviously. Um, but shit, I I think Duda has a larger plan at play. For sure, I think even if. Even if Emmett were to pull this off, 
I don't think dude is the type that's going to be able to sleep at night knowing that he let somebody take a shot at him and he's still walking around. For sure. It's just bad for business. Yeah. No matter who you are, if that gets out or that makes you look a certain way, I don't know. It's setting up a big chain of events that I have no idea where it's headed. I don't know. I don't know if Emmett goes to Alicia, mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, and lets her in on it. And maybe they try to run the old okie doke on Duda. I don't know if Duda keeps eyes on Emmett this whole time to make sure what he needs done is done. I don't know how much time he's going to give Emmett to get this done. Oh, tricky. I don't know. I don't know. Here's what I do know. Duda and Alicia have what I'm understanding is a tumultuous relationship. Very much so. She knows and believes that he killed her brother. He, in fact, did kill her brother. Mm -hmm. But their beef or her eyes being on him go further than that, as we learn of Bianca's character. She's been having her pretty much on Duda, spying on Duda. She may or may not be using her as a prostitute. She, I mean, we know she's fucking Duda. <laughs> so is that the favor? Is that the favor that she's cashing in? That to Alicia's what? cashing in? To kill Duda? I don't know. Okay. That's what I'm saying. I, what What is that favor? Remember she sat down with her? Yes. Said, I'm, but what that is that favor? First sit down. Remember part one where we first meet Bianca? She yeah. sends her to, um, to do the spot, which is her right. star lounge where they all meet. So she's been had her pretty much on him, but now that she's back in the city, I think that she's asking her to kick up the favor, and I think she wants to use her pretty much as a. That's what I'm getting to. Gotcha. I want to know because I need you close to this nigga, and I want to see what we can get, what I need to know, how he's moving. Yeah, because we went to the next scene um, without her, without knowing exactly what that favor was. Yeah, yeah. Just letting her know that it was time to cash in on it. Mm -hmm. So we have both of these, I guess the kingpins, for lack of better terms, yeah. asking someone for a favor. Mm -hmm. We know for sure what Duda's is. Yeah. We don't know what Alicia's is. We can only assume, and I'm about 95% sure it has something to do with Duda. For sure. Um, but that type of, I will give credit, that type of writing sets up the foundation for the rest of your season. Yes. It's not giving us too much. It's leaving the door open. There are endless possibilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there's no way Emmett should have walked out of there alive. But here we are. Here we and are. We're in we're in for a doozy of a of a second part of the season. Here, here is why part of why I think that uh Emmett walks out. I think Duda knows also that while Emmett came alone, enough people knew where he was going. So I cannot without murdering your entire family and whomever else. I cannot cleanly get you out of here right now because when you don't come home today where I'm positive that you've told people where you were going, that makes things tricky for me. And he's already had to come back from a violent, uh, being outed as violent, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's the Damn, only it's... reason, one of, and now wanting this favor done. Yeah, because she asked, she asked Bianca directly, like, how close are you? Like, that means he trusts you. That's good to know. Yeah. So whatever it is, it's conniving. For sure. They both, they, this is a, we don't get a ton of television where you just have two, even the posters, even the promo posters, mm -hmm. there's two different versions. Um, and depending on which version, you either have Duda, that's kind of the main figure, or you have Alicia, that's the main figure. Yeah. And um, I forget what the tagline is. On the poster is something about rain. Mm. Let's see who will who will rain. It's the tagline. So obviously that's what the, well, that's what's coming to a head in all of this. Mm -hmm. um, who's going to be the better chess player? I don't know, man. Do the hard motherfucker to get up out of here. He <laughs> is. He He'll is. step ahead. He'll step ahead, and uh, I think that what we get throughout this season, 
I'm hoping um, that they stay in line and true to do this character and really give us some twists and turns. For sure. Uh, I think he's a step ahead all the way, but yeah. we don't know much about Alicia, so I don't know. Well, what we do know is that Alicia don't have no damn sense. Yeah, and because that can be bad for war. Sending Rob, your son, who you know ain't no killer, despite being a... I don't... I don't like calling people who only sell weed drug dealers. Like, he's a weed man. <laughs> the weed man, yeah. Sending him out to kill this kingpin, the top dog, and you don't know that your son has ever shot a gun, one moving, a moving target, fucking ever? You don't have no damn sense. And I understand wanting to avenge your brother. Howsoever, you have to be smart about it. So I hope that she takes whatever her plan with Bianca, she has, a, she puts a little bit more thought into it. Because, uh, go ahead. No, I, I promise. I promise everyone listening. I, I, I promise you this will be my last wire reference. Okay. But yeah, once again, okay. once again, there's so many similarities. Once mm -hmm. again, to your point, Rachel, Sending him out there to do that. Mm -hmm. There was a scene in the wire where Slim, not excuse me, Stringer Bell asked Slim Charles to take out Clay Davis. Clay mm -hmm. Davis, a state senator. Yep. All types of shit. You know, he arguing, and Avon finally steps in and said, What? Like, you just kill a downtown nigga like that, the whole world gonna take notice. You need a day of the jackal type motherfucker to do some shit like that, not a rumble tumble nigga like Slim. That part. Somebody should have been telling Alicia, like, you need a professional to take out a nigga like that. Not this weed that man part. on the. He's your son and all, but he, bro, he, you think he gonna touch Duda? Right. Come on, be smart. Absolutely no sense. And uh, Bakari, to your point, Bakari says something to him. You came for the king and you missed. Bro, what you think gonna happen? Come on, dog. I'm at your head. I'm at your head until this, until your head gone. That's it. That's it. Whew. I'm excited. It was a strong part. Two, very, um, very. I don't think I realized that going into it that it wouldn't be the start of seven. Uh, that Me it neither. was be the second part, and I know that a lot of shows are doing that um, these days for whatever reason. But it was a very, very, very strong uh, reopening, and Absolutely. I'm excited to see where we go. Couple of little things we learned that Nita and uh, Dre, Nina and Dre are no longer together, who is Keisha and Kev's uh, moms. I don't really love that. Um, we saw um, Tracy and Jason Weaver in shots. X, I can't remember her name. We saw them talking. So I hope that we see more of Rashad despite uh, him essentially being homeless. Since uh, Trig wouldn't let him move in when he sent the wrong text. <laughs> hey, please, please double check before you hit send. Please, please, please. I can't really think of more. I, I can't think of something more that leaves me more embarrassed. Um, or that would leave me more embarrassed than hitting, sending a message to the wrong person. Yeah. I mean, like, we've the worst done things you could do. I've, I've we've done all it. done it. Yeah, we've all done it. But shout out to Apple and iPhone for unseen text. As hopefully you catch it before uh, they read it. But <laughs> and I'm the type of nigga. That, I'm the type of nigga to send a message. What you want to send? <laughs> I'm, that, I'm that nigga. What you saying? What say? you Yeah, say that shit with your chest. <laughs> <laughs> um, but next week, yeah, I'm sorry. Did you have any other small notes that you're going? No, through? that's it. I'm excited for next week. Yeah, next week episode is titled "Want This Smoke." Mm. Um, so you know. Titles are going. They're, they're giving us everything that we uh that we should be hoping for. Yeah. Want this smoke? More of the aftermath. More of a setup episode, I believe. Um, I, I feel like this is going to be. When I say this, I mean next week's episode. I feel like it's going to be more of a setup for the rest of the season. Got it. Got it. I'm, Compared I'm, to I'm, what this episode would have been. For sure. I'm curious about what. Want this smoke? Is this gunfire smoke? Is it? Smoky smoke? Is it the rib off in Chicago? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what I'm thinking this too, and this is a complete shot in the dark. All of it. Um, 
all of it and what I would imagine, this goes to my theory of this as being a setup episode, I believe, next week. Yeah. Everyone knows the phrase where there's smoke, there's fire. For sure. I think people are going to start to connect some dots, mm-hmm. um, figure a couple things out, and then set up the long play to get us to episode 16. Got it. Uh, which will be the eighth episode of the second part. So I don't think we have gunfire. I don't think, I think this first episode was a lot of action. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily action, action, but really answering some questions that everybody had ever since last September when yeah. the episode uh, ended. And I think that by the time we get to three and four, it's going to ratchet up. For sure. So we'll see. We'll see. This was uh, this was fun, Rachel. Our first time talking about the shot. Yeah, yeah I'm excited. I'm excited. Absolutely. What happens. You, you and me both. So um, as always, thank you, everyone out there watching or listening, whether you're Cruising in the car, cruising in the car. What the fuck do I sound like? Whether you're in, <laughs> whether you're in the car, yeah, exactly. You know, on your Apple podcast app, it'll be on Spotify. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, we appreciate you. We can't do this without you. Uh, we love we got y'all. We are back. Yeah. Once again, we'll be back for a while because, like I said, even when June comes, we'll be rolling right into House of Dragon. For sure. Uh, we'd like to give y'all some variety. So please That's check cool. the episode description. Once again, there will be, I will drop the link to that YouTube video for the 15 minute rundown. If you haven't had time to get caught up, that at least gets you in the conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll make sure we put the link tree for all of our other content. Rachel and myself have another podcast, The Culture Garden. Uh, We pretty much do this, but we do it with films. Yes. Um, So we release every single Thursday on that feed. YouTube link is there. Social media, email address, the whole nine will be in our episode description. Mm -hmm. Uh, Please subscribe, comment, rate. Once again, tell a friend to tell a friend. We appreciate all of you deeply. Um, that's about it. We're going to see y'all next week. Uh, we will figure out what days these are going to drop. The shy comes on Fridays. Rachel and myself will take some time to figure out when we want to record these on a consistent so we'll have them to you. Um, and we'll go from there. But other than that, y'all be cool. Hey, y'all be cool. Peace out, guys. Thanks for listening <laughs> and watching. <laughs> Peace. We out. Bye.